in eastern Washington, Sergeant Brian Fulton and Officer John Horn are heading to the Columbia River for boat patrol. I cannot imagine working in an office eight or 10 hours a day, that's where you're at, is behind a desk. That's just uh, not for me, I couldn't do it. I gotta be out here, being able to move around, see different things, see different people. I would definitely wouldn't survive in an office environment. Officer Horn and I are gonna put our patrol vessel on the Columbia River here in town trying to help uh, educate some people that might still be out there sturgeon fishing. Sturgeon fishing was closed as of yesterday. There have been a lot of them dying lately. So we're gonna go out today to make sure that no one's continuing to fish for those when they shouldn't be. In the Columbia Basin, both green sturgeon and white sturgeon can be found. The green sturgeon lives up to 70 years, grows up to seven feet and weighs 350 pounds, while the white sturgeon, the largest fish in North America, can live up to 100 years, reach a maximum length of 20 feet, weighing over 2,000 pounds. Some of these fish that are dying are of the breeding age, possibly 50 to 60 year old fish, and it's just not something that's gonna bounce back. So one of the jobs today too is also to help document any dead sturgeon that we do see out there. We'll take a look at them to see if they've already been counted or not. Uh, most of the fish that have already been counted have been marked. I mean, we're getting several each day that weren't documented before. You know, I've been with fish from all life for a little over 14 years, and this is the first time that I've seen a situation like this. Due to the uh, historic drought conditions, been uh, really hard on the sturgeon this year. A lot of them have been dying. There's there something white on shore there. Yeah, that's got to be it. So we have another uh, white sturgeon carcass here that's floating on the shore of the river. And I got a report on this one this morning. So we're going to kind of check it out, see if it's one that hasn't been documented yet, see if the uh, tail fin's been clipped or not, which is an indication that our bios have already checked it. You can't see the top of the tail fin. Gonna reach down with this hook here to turn it, see if it's been documented. Now the top of the fin's still intact. Okay. Just gonna try to get my hand on this to cut part of the tail fin off so we, so when other people come across it, we already know it's been documented. It's one that's been counted. This thing is really ripe right now. Nasty. Oh. Sorry, I'll do the next one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just documenting its approximate size, where we found it, and that we've marked it. A lot of them may not get counted because they're hung up on stuff underwater or along the shoreline where people don't see them. Yeah, just taking a look at them. What do you guys do with them? We don't do anything with them. Just leave it? Yep. We came out today because we had read about all the sturgeons floating up. We were kind of worried. You know, being from Washington State, I mean, even look at our state quarter. You know, we got salmon on our state quarter, so fish is what we do. And uh, this is kind of, as residents of Washington State, you know, we, this is a concern. Just taking some uh, pictures of it here to document the size. I'd estimate this is probably a good nine foot fish. This one here I'm noticing on the uh, tail fin, it hasn't been cut off, so I will cut the tail fin. Hopefully they quit dying here pretty soon, but definitely losing a lot of them in the meantime. I'll forward the information on to the uh, biologist so they can keep an accurate count on how many exactly are dying. Yeah, you know, some of these surgeons that are dying are 40, 50, 60 year old fish, and now they're gone. Yeah, it's a little concerning when you see something like that die, because that has a potential to impact the species for a long, long time, probably long after, you know, I'm still here.